Today we're going to be talking about some updates from DJI and specifically the new RoboMaster EP that launched on Monday and I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of what it is as well as the differences between it and the RoboMaster S1 and we're also going to talk a little bit about some images that have leaked as well around a potential new Mavic Air. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the new RoboMaster EP. Now this was launched on Monday and is only available in Hong Kong and one or two other countries at the moment. Now hopefully, just like the original RoboMaster, it will come to the rest of them, but here and now it is only going to be available in them. Now the EP, whilst it looks very similar to the existing RoboMaster, it is a very different unit. It has a whole host of new sensors, new compatibility, but that is only on the EP. And and sadly, much of this is not backwards compatible with the existing RoboMaster model, including much of the hardware. Now, if we take a closer look at the new EP, it does come in two versions. There's going to be an engineer version and a warrior version, and you're going to be able to buy a kit which allows you to build both, or there's probably going to be a kit of one or the other. Now, it comes in the engineer mode with an all new grabber arm, which is controlled by the app or by the software. This is a mechanical arm which is bolted onto the top in replacement of the blaster and it allows you to pick things up, program it and do things like that. Now it uses a new servo that DJI have introduced as part of the EP kit as well to actually control the grabber and this is going to allow you to do a lot more robotic projects with the uh, EP once this becomes available to the rest of the world as well and it opens up a whole host of new options from programming right through to be able to build it into anything you want it to do. Now, as I've mentioned, this kit is a new one, and whilst it is similar, none of this is backwards compatible. And at the same time, DJI launched their new Open SDK that allows you to actually connect the RoboMaster EP to third party hardware, such as the Raspberry Pi, the Jetson, as well as the Arduino and other third party microcontrollers as well, to allow you to actually run onboard software and control the EP directly from that and allow you to to do all sorts of other robotic combinations. Now, sadly, this isn't coming to the S1 and most of this is going to be limited to the EP only. Now, when you look at what they're showing, it's going to have a new equipment. You've got the new mechanical claw, which is controlled via the onboard software and the new servo. You've got the robotic arm and you've also got now four new sensor modules that live on each corner on the RoboMaster EP. And these allow you to connect external sensors for measuring things like temperature, humidity, and other things like that. And they mount onto a new frame which goes on the bed of the EP or the RoboMaster itself. Another nice thing on this frame is that it is Lego compatible. And it means that you can actually put bits of Lego onto it and build it into a frame and you can build all sorts on the top of it. And if you're going to use the DJI Servo as well, you're going to be able to use all of that and connect it all in too. Another nice feature that they've added is a new sensor called a TOF sensor and this allows them to do range finding. You can see that it's mounted on the top of the engineer, uh, sorry, on the warrior module and it allows it to either do object sensing or measure the distance of what's in front of it. And that, again, sadly, that isn't going to be compatible with the existing S1. Now, what DJI are saying with this is that it is one machine with multiple platforms. You're going to have a combination kit that allows you to actually build it either into the warrior or the engineer mode or the sentry depending on which one they want to call it you've then got the engineering vehicle or you've got the infantry stroke warrior vehicle just like the original RoboMaster S1 and it's going to look very similar but it does have some changes and it does have that new TOF sensor on board as well. Now the nice thing with the new DJI Open Onboard SDK means you're going to be able to connect it to those third-party multi-controllers, you're going to be able to do a whole host of robotic applications that you haven't been able to do with the S1 and whilst the S1 did allow you to do a lot of programming it was very limited within the walled garden that DJI allow and whilst a number of guys have taken it upon themselves to really dig into this and do quite a bit of hacking probably isn't the right word but really pushing the limits of what you can do on the RoboMaster sadly it's not going to be anywhere near the level that we can do on the new EP model and you're not going to be able to actually get that level of control on 
on the existing one. Now, as I've mentioned, none of these new features are backwards compatible to the S1, and there is no upgrade path for it, not even by changing the multi-controller. We assume the multi-controller is different on the new EP to allow communication with all of these new sensors, but sadly, DJI have stated that there is no option to upgrade an existing S1 to the new EP, and if you did want all of these capabilities, it does mean buying a new model. Now, as I mentioned, it does have a whole host of I.O. input on this new model. You've got S-Bus, CAN bus, UART, you've got the sensor modules on each corner, which allow you to connect analog to digital inputs as well. So there is a lot more you're going to be able to do with this. And as time goes on, we're going to see people do it. Now, here and now, there is no pricing on this for the rest of Europe or US or UK. That hasn't been announced yet. We don't even know when we're going to see it. I would suspect it's going to be more towards the end of the year. Now, this doesn't mean the existing S S1 is end of life or redundant. The S1 was really the start of this and it still is very much an educational battle robot. It's just not at the same level the new RoboMaster EP is. And it is annoying that we're not going to be able to take these upgrades over to the S1. I would love to have been able to do it. But then again, on the flip side, I've always wanted a second one of these to be able to battle with. So I'm going to end up going that way and buying an EP for that rather than going down the road of trying to figure out if upgrades are available for this but hopefully as soon as there's more info on this being available I will share it with you guys if you do have an S1 today as I've said you're not going to be able to upgrade it but if you're looking to buy one personally right now I would hold off a minute until we know what the situation with the EP is and then we'll be able to make a better decision when it comes out whether it's actually going to be more expensive than the S1 or whether you're going to see a price drop on the S1 I don't know but I would hold out if you haven't actually bought one yet and you have been considering it. Now, the next thing I want to quickly talk to you guys about is some leaked images that came out a couple of days ago about a potential new Mavic model. Now, everyone is saying this is the Mavic E, and all I'm going to do is just give you some of my thoughts on some of the images I've seen. Now, taking a closer look at it, you can see it is very much based on what we've seen before from the recent models from DJI. It's a grey thing that folds up. Um, you've got the image showing it in someone's hand. It's quite hard to really see how large it is there, actually. To me, it looks a little bit bigger than I would have expected for a Mavic Air. Um, you can see on the bottom, it's got Mavic tattooed in. You've got your TOF sensors. You've got your downward cameras with your light as well. And you've got a camera and gimbal mechanism, which is very similar to what we've seen on the DJI Osmo Pocket and what we've seen them do on their more recent aircraft as well. Now, other than that, it doesn't really tell us a lot. There are two object avoidance sensors on the back as well, which show us that too. Moving around to the bottom again, you can just see it is very, very much a smaller version of the Mavic Pro. One of the interesting things on this, though, is the new remote controller. And I'm really not sure about this because the standard Mavic remote, which is this one here for the Mavic 2, has been out for quite a long time now. And to me, this has been a great design. It's small, it's portable. Whilst I was never a massive fan of having the phone in the bottom of it, I got it whilst I did it and I just got used to it. Now, this thing looks a lot more bulky and a lot bigger. And what it looks like they've done is filled in the bottom bit and your phone and device is actually going to have to go at the top. And there must be something built in that flips out. I'm guessing there's something that flips out from underneath and holds your phone above the top. And whilst I get why DJI have done that, because a lot of people did prefer doing that, it has bulked the size of the remote controller up quite a lot. And really, it's going to be about that big looking at it, which is going to take up a lot more space. And for a smaller aircraft, I'm not sure that is the best move. But we're going to have to see on this because this is uncharted territory. We don't know what is going to happen. Now, from all of these things, I've seen all of the websites going nuts, new Mavic Mini. Look, there's no spec been released. There's no nothing been put out there right now. The reality is this is just a few leaked images of something that says Mavic on the bottom. For all we know, this is an early prototype of a Mavic Mini or something else. Um, if it is the Mavic E2, as has been hinted, I really don't know where DJI are going to go with it because the reality is the Mavic 
ear was a very well designed and it was a really good aircraft and I'm a bit disappointed in some ways to see this go to that horrible plain grey that we've got recently. You know if you look at the overall design of the Mavic ear it was really, really good. The industrial engineering involved, you had all of the airflow around the sides, little metal grids with the airflow came out of the internal fans. It wasn't just a flying folding gray thing that we've had from DJI of late, you know, the Mavic Mini, the Mavic 2. Yes, they're functional, but they're not exactly aesthetically pleasing aircraft. And whilst that doesn't really change anything, I do like something that has great industrial engineering. And it's just a bit of a shame to see all of these things replicating the last one. You know, if you line these all up, if this is a new Mini, you're going to, they're just going to look identical just in different sizes. I'm just, it just seems a bit pointless to me. Now, what spec it might have, it looks to be a quarter inch sensor camera. At this point, it's impossible to actually say. You would assume that would be 12 megapixel, but there is no reason. They can't go 20 megapixel on this or la or around that size because other manufacturers have done it. We've actually seen Autel do that with their 20 megapixel sensor, but it's 12. So perhaps they might do something around that. Will they move it over to OcuSync from Wi-Fi? Who knows? That is really the key here because the Mavic E's overall spec was very good. You know, it had a fixed focus camera and it used Wi-Fi. Really, it was as good as a Mavic Pro in most situations apart from range. And actually, in my opinion, the fixed focus camera was a benefit and not a downside because sometimes the autofocus cameras are just a pain when you're wanting to get a good shot. And if you're not paying attention, you can actually miss the shot because the camera's out of focus. Now, if it does follow the trend we've seen, it might have an autofocus camera. It might use OcuSync as well. So what you could have is a smaller version of the Mavic Pro and that's probably the easiest way to assume this would go. So it's not going to have a zoom lens like the Mavic 2 zoom. It would almost be the same specification as a Mavic Pro but just in a much smaller platform and if that was to happen that would make it a very very good aircraft but again does it really suit everyone considering it doesn't have the onboard screen on the remote controller? It's hard to say. And especially with that increase in size, who knows where it'll end up. Um, battery life on it, I would expect it to be decent. I'd expect it to be at least 20 minutes. Um, and, and really, that's probably about the overall spec. Basically, a small Mavic Pro and a remote controller like we've seen without the onboard screen. And that's probably what we're likely to see if there is going to be a Mavic A2. Bit disappointed that it is losing the nice industrial design that we did see from the original one. At the end of the day, that doesn't actually change functionality, so it isn't really a biggie. Anyway, that is it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do subscribe to the channel. There are links to all of these products in the description of this video as well. I really appreciate those who support the channel by purchasing via those links. If you do want to get yourself an aircraft, please also check out some of the other videos we have on the channel as well. And as I said, please do subscribe, like and share, and I will do another video again soon. Oh, video's phone's going off.